How's it going everybody? My name is Magneti and I welcome you to the Mothership. Today we're going to be talking about the top four CK3 mod conversions or conversion mods. Let's get started. All right, before we jump right into the mods, I just want to go over the list really quickly. So we're going to be going over Elder Kings 2, Lord of the Rings, Realms in Exile, A Game of Thrones, Warcraft, Guardians of Azeroth, Reforged. That's everything. Now keep in mind, all of these are collection mods, which means you download them as a whole mod off the Steam Workshop, and it's it's actually pretty simple. I'll be uploading a YouTube short alongside this video to show you how to do that. I'll also be uploading deep dive videos about each mod in the coming weeks as well, so keep that in mind too. All right, starting off with number one, Elder Kings. Kings 2. Now, this game is set during the chaotic interim of the Second Era, which is about a thousand years before the events of Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, and Elder Kings 2 allows players to take an active role in the 400 years of strife that saw local warlords, petty kings, and spiritual leaders complete over, excuse me, compete over the remnants of the Empire. And mechanically, Elder Kings 2 tweaks some of the vanilla systems of CK3, but also expands on some mechanics just to do the justice of a fantasy setting like the Elder Scrolls. Now, some of the things that have been brought in with this mod are a highly detailed map of Tamriel at it says roughly two thirds of the size of the vanilla map, which is pretty freaking huge. All 10 playable races from the main games, plus some more, like I'm gonna butcher these, to Sezeki, Limolithidi, Goblins, Kathringi, I don't know how to say any of these. And then a custom feature, magic. Another custom feature, vampires. It added a culture, nativity zones, religion, pantheons and patreons, dynamic holy sites, war, uh, might makes right. Okay, new governments, autocracy, pirates, Altmer, ceremonicry, main hierarchy, academy, which is unplayable, and military order, which is also unplayable. Succession type, Nordic moot elective. Traits, birth signs, traits and appearance, Khajiit, first stock, and moon phases. Now this mod adds a lot more than just those features as well. And sorry, I butchered some of the names of some of these things, but this mod just brings an absolute fuckload of shit to CK3. It completely alters, which is what a total conversion is, the game in its entirety and makes it completely Elder Scrolls based, which is exactly what you'd think this mod does. All right, moving into number two, Lord of the Rings Realms in Exile. So there's not really much of a description to summarize, and I'm not too super familiar with the lore of Lord of the Rings, so I'll just leave a picture of the description right here. Now there are three major features for this mod. That's playing as Denethor, the steward of, I'm gonna butcher this again, Minas Tirith. Tirith. I play as Sauron, the Lord of the Rings, and play as the Golden King of Abrakan. Now within playing is Denethor, your son Boromir is a great captain of men. How long must a kingdom be without a king? And though you do not see it, Faramir stands beside his brother in Valiance. Now these are just the features that I'm reading directly from the mod workshop, okay? Special buildings for Minas Tirith, Minas Ithil, Dol Amroth, and Pelagrir. Unique city, castle, and temple, 3D models for the Dúnedain culture, and events for the return of the king. Now playing as Sauron, the Lord of the Rings, you send forth your Nazgul and Uryx who will lead the vast armies of orcs to overrun Middle-earth, driving the free peoples into the sea. A full set of Uruk buildings to industrialize Mordor, and dark ritual activity. Now playing as the Golden King of Abrakan, subjugate the far hard waith with missions and decisions unique to Sauron's principal servant in the south. Special buildings for Abrakan, the Zex Palace, Abrakan Bazaar and the Grand Noria. Groundbreaking terrain features for CK3, which would be the alien landscape of the Mirror of Fire and the Rocky Deserts of Dar Salaam. Now, the person who created this mod didn't leave a great description and features for me to list off of, but I can tell you that just like the previous mod, this Lord of the Rings Realms of an Exile conversion mod completely converts CK3, and it's set in the Realms in Exile world, which if you're a huge Lord of the Rings fan, you might know what that is. Moving into number three, A Game of Thrones. Now this is, again, another huge conversion mod, and these are just some of the features here. We've got Mega Wars, Kinsguard, Expanded Counselors, Knights and Squires, Knights Watch and Beyond the Wall, Deeper Roleplay, armors, crowns, and swords, more cultures and religions, spy networks, an enormous map, just like the Elder Kings 2, a meticulously detailed map, roads, roads, and roads, and so much more. 
roads, but stuff as well. There's more than that as well. Now, CK3 Aga is a total conversion mod. Like I said, it's set in the world of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire fantasy saga. So I would assume the Game of Thrones books, okay? Now, lords great and small will vie for control over the lands of ice and fire. The mod takes its name from the first book in the series, as well as the game of plots and politics. The ambitious and hopeful are said to be playing in their struggles for supremacy. Moving in to number four, Warcraft, Guardians of Azeroth Reforged. Now, here's some of the features. There's a new map, of course, again. Bookmarks, new governments, military unions, innovations, buildings, and men at arms, culture and faiths, handcrafted history and contextual storytelling, legendary artifacts, and art additions. So this developer has some features to come that he's looking to implement, or they are looking to implement. One is a magic system. Another one is a uh, legion invasions and the crash landing of the Exodor events. Map expansion to include the Broken Isles and additional provinces, islands, and navigable rivers. And then new Warcraft art facts, events, history, and he says much more. Now, if you know anything about CK3, you'll know that downloading any of these mods isn't going to change the basic concepts of CK3, okay? It's still going to be a grand strategy game. It's still going to be, you know, war conquering, or I mean, maybe you prefer different ways to conquer, but hey. Anyway, my point being, all of these mods are fantastic mods and will make CK3 a lot better. They're all total conversion mods. They all come with a new map. They all change the way the game is played or some of the features, not the obvious, you know, overall overarching objective of the game, but it changes the game. All of these mods change the game in such a great way that makes the game a lot more fun. My buddy Kyle actually has probably over a thousand hours in this game and has played all of these mods and has recommended all of them to me. And I based my review for these mods or my top four list off of his opinion, my opinion, and the reviews on the Steam Workshop. That probably doesn't really matter to you, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. So, I may not be completely interested in all of the subjects of these mods. However, the Steam community and the CK3 community has clearly made it obvious which mods are greatly appreciated in the Steam Workshop. I have seen gameplay of all these mods and they all look fantastic. Let's just do a real quick overview of what we went over. Pretty simple. Number one, Elder Kings 2 conversion. Number two, Lord of the Rings Realms in Exile conversion. Number three, a Game of Thrones conversion. Number four, Warcraft Guardians of Azeroth Reforged. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section. But other than that, we'll talk again real soon.